Hi, I'm Arthur Haynes and thank you for tuning in. As many of you know, the bulk of my instruction centers on wild food and medicine that's collected outdoors. But today I wanted to turn things around and bring you inside the home. The reality is I, like most of you, spend a great deal of time indoors, whether it be preparing food, working, sleeping, or whatever the case might be. And I wanted to make it clear to people that wild food and medicine is not about spending all of our time outdoors and living in a primitive setting, but rather bringing that health and bringing that medicine into our homes so that we can enjoy the health benefits of wild food and medicine. Now today I'm going to be talking about the rainbow smell. And that's this fish that I'm holding right here. This fish is a member of the trout and salmon family and it migrates here uh, in Maine during the winter and can be caught through the ice using hooks and bait. Now we actually have two types of rainbow smelt here in the state. One of them is an anadromous fish and this is a word that's used for species that spend part of their life cycle in the ocean maturing and then return to the freshwater rivers to spawn. We also have a landlocked rainbow smell, and these are uh, individuals that do not return to the sea and in fact are caught at a slightly different time of year and by a slightly different method. These are species that are usually caught using handheld dip nets in small inlets to lakes when the uh, ice is just beginning to um, leave those lakes. Now, what makes the smelt such a great food, um, first, just starting with its flesh, is we're dealing with something that has a very easy process to clean. And because the scales are also very small, like other species of trout that we have here in Maine, we don't have to worry about removing that from a fillet or using some type of descaler to remove these because we can actually just consume the skin, which is obviously a rich source of lipids and vitamins. And the other great thing about this fish is that the bones are extremely easy to remove from the cooked fish. So there's very, very little work uh, needed when deboning this. But the absolute best feature of this particular fish when it's caught through the ice this time of year when it's returning from the ocean is the fact that it contains the roe and milk because these are reproductive individuals that are moving upstream to spawn. And of course, these are extremely nutrient-dense superfoods that have been used by the indigenous of this continent and other continents as well to prepare people for childbirth. And that includes both men and women for conception, the development of the fetus, and raising healthy young children. Now what I'm going to do is give you a chance to see how easy these fish are to clean. It's really super easy, particularly with a decent quality knife. Just start at the vent and make a little slice up through right here to between the two gills. And you can already see the row, all the fish eggs becoming exposed when I've opened up the body cavity. A little cut behind the head. Don't go all the way through because I want that to remain attached so I can pull all of the viscera and the eggs out. I had actually a little bit that remained behind. That's actually it. A little pass with the thumbnail to clean anything else out and that fish is done and ready to be eaten. Of course, the real part of this fish that I'm seeking in this case are the roe. And these are sacks of fish eggs that you can see here. Now these fish obviously come in two sexes. I've showed you the female and now I'm going to show you the male. The cleaning process is identical. Start at the vent, cut our way up through until we get to that little gap between the gill flaps here. Cut just behind the head and again pull all the viscera out. That will go in our compost for the one plant that we cultivate, which is garlic. And this time, inside, you will notice these white masses, which are the male reproductive organs. Now, our culture tends to discard these, but these are just as nutrient dense as the roe are. That fish is done, and you can see the white masses here. Those are going to be consumed as well. 
Nutritionally speaking, it's hard to find a more nutrient-dense food than fish roe and fish milk. It's no wonder that the indigenous use these foods to prepare expecting mothers for pregnancy and childbirth because of the various benefits that they have, particularly to the developing fetus. Now these uh, foods that you've seen me remove from the fish are loaded with a number of vitamins and these include things like vitamin A, B complex, C, and E. Now really importantly, the for B complex, it is vitamin B12 that is extremely, extremely well endowed in this food. And remember that vitamin B12 is necessary for normal brain and nervous system function. It's also involved in the synthesis of fatty acids, blood formation, and in fact it's utilized uh, via the metabolism of every cell in the human body. Now there's also a score of minerals found in Roe and that includes the antioxidant mineral selenium. And we're also dealing with a food that is extremely high in omega-3 fatty acids. And omega-3 fatty acids, of course, as a whole, are going to uh, bolster the functioning of the immune system and suppress inflammation, essentially counteract the uh, overindulgence of omega-6 fatty acids that our uh, culture has here. We also have a food that is very rich in cholesterol and because of the cholesterol, the fats that are found in this, as well as the vitamins and minerals, we have something that promotes healthy um, development of the brain and nervous system in the developing child and as well in adults as well. Now in terms of consuming the fish, Eat them any way you like to have fish. These can obviously be included in soups and stews. Uh, my favorite way is to batter them with an acorn flour and fry them in a pan with butter. And in which case, we can just extract the bone out of the cooked fish. And I'll show you that in a moment. Um, in terms of the roe and milk, they can obviously be consumed raw. And in fact, because this is such a mild tasting roe, in fact, I don't know of a fish egg that has a milder flavor than this. It is extremely easy to consume the fresh stuff raw. But I also like those fried in a pan with butter. And it is really wonderful. And you can have them as is, put them in omelets, drop them in soups. There's a number of different ways you can consume them. What you need to do is to figure out how you can get them into your diet and you may be dealing with overcoming sort of a, a societal bias in how you view these foods. Uh, but just to let you see how wonderful these are, this is the fresh roe that I've collected out. It absolutely melts on the tongue, sort of like a granular butter, if you will absolutely delicious. But now I'm going to cook some up and show you how that comes out. As promised, a quick look at how easy these fish are to debone. The spinal cord is right there and all the meat just comes right off that so easily. As you can see, and all the bones are set aside and you just have these nice well-cooked fillets ready to be eaten. So my breakfast this morning, the wild-caught smelts, which we battered in an acorn flour and pan-fried in butter, the cooked milt and roe. In fact, I've really cooked that for your benefit. If you weren't watching, most of that would have been consumed raw because the B-complex vitamins uh, are happen to be uh, a heat-sensitive vitamin that I don't want to destroy all of that. The wild collected fruit leather that you've seen here is something that you've actually may have watched me create. This is choke cherry and then raw Jersey milk with added cream so that it's even more thick than the whole milk coming straight from the cow. Now as you can see, the rainbow smelt makes a great wild food. The wonderful thing about this particular fish is that you can capture it yourself and you have two different times of year here in Maine where it can be easily done in quantity through ice fishing and through dip netting. But please remember that this is a food that can also be purchased at your local seafood counter. Uh, a number of places in the mid-coast area of Maine, for example, uh, the fish counters will actually buy these 
from the anglers who are gathered, catching them through the ice. Now the neat thing about these fish is they come from a particular river um, here that has no industry and passes through no villages, which means it's an exceptionally clean water, which is really special for us. We're extremely fortunate. Now, of course, you need to learn the local ecology of your landscape, which means that you have to identify the fish that live there in the clean waters that you have access to, and to also learn what time of year and what method that you'll be using to gather these fish so that you can bring wild nutrition into your home. Now, the great thing, and sort of a parting thought here about things like smelts, alewives, and herring, is that these are smaller fish who are low order predators. And what I mean by that is they are further down on the food chain eating very small invertebrates and, and also very tiny vertebrates. The great thing about this is that they bioaccumulate far less toxins uh, from the environment. Those ever present and ever distributed toxins that we have to contend with in our world when we're thinking about our dietary choices. This uh, makes a wonderful food because of the fact that that bioaccumulation has had fewer steps than some of the larger fish like tuna, swordfish, and mackerel.